assistant pastor at Brian Baptist Church, and we'd like to welcome you to our Sunday school lesson this morning. Um, before we begin into the lesson, um, we did have a special prayer request come in over the internet. Uh, Brother Gail, a member of our church, has a friend, Beverly Mott, or a friend of the family. Their prayer request, their son passed away at 25 years old. Um, we weren't given a whole lot of details, but it's it's sad to see a 25-year-old uh, young man pass away um, just before life's beginning. And I'm sure there are many others that have prayer requests from our, our regular Sunday school church body. I can think of many of the members um, that are usually sitting in here on a Sunday morning, and, and I know their prayer requests, and so does the Lord. Um, we are going to pray this morning before we begin. Then I'll, I'll read a Bible verse, pray for the Holy Spirit to anoint me this morning as I teach. But if anyone does have a prayer request out there, um, go ahead and email us. Let us know what it is. That way we can pray for it. Um, even though we haven't, we're not gathering as a church right now, we are gathering each one of us in our homes. That way we can pray at the same time, and uh, that way we don't forget to pray for someone. Um, so Beverly Mott's uh, son passed away, 25 years old. Um, I also want to pray for some of the uh, the older saints and that are in our church as well, that the Lord would protect them, um, keep them safe. Uh, we have many, many uh, of our members that go up north, some not as far up north as others, but they're still up north nonetheless. Um, I just ask that uh, we pray for them as well. Um, and then obviously each one of us has loved ones in our family that need to be saved. And if they are saved and they're away from the Lord, that they need to draw on him and draw a little bit closer. So let's uh, begin this morning opening in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Lord, to come together, to come before your throne. Lord, being able to pray to you and ask you for things that are according to your will. Lord, that's truly, truly a blessing to be able to talk to God Almighty through you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, now this morning, I ask that you be with Beverly and Mott. You be with the family. Lord, I, I know that it's... It's probably a gut-wrenching, heartfelt loss that the family's feeling. I don't know if they're saved or not. I don't know if this young man was saved. <clears throat> but Lord, I just ask that you comfort the family. Lord, your word says to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. This morning, Lord, let us in our hearts weep for this family. Lord, help us to draw closer to you. Lord, I know that the devil would want nothing more than to, to divide and destroy families, especially at times like this. Make them question and doubt that you're even there. But Lord, I just ask that you be with them. We have many in our church, Lord, that are older, that have served you for decades, longer than, than I've been saved. Many in this church have served and honored you, Lord, with their lives. Lord, now I ask that you honor them with protection. Lord, that you meet their needs, that you keep them safe, that you help encourage them. Lord, many of us in our families, many of the members here, their family, maybe they, they have a, a loved one who's not saved. Lord, I ask that you would give them the opportunity during this time to give them the word of God, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, open a door and give them the strength to walk through it that they may give the gospel to that family member who's not saved. Lord, and in a loving way, if they see one of their family jumping or going over a cliff in their life, and it could lead to destruction, Lord, I ask that you intervene and, and you help and you, you soften the heart of that one that's going away. Lord, for the family's sake, you would do this. Now, Lord, I just ask that you be with our nation. Lord, be with the world in this time. Lord, help many to turn to you and accept you as a Savior. And Lord, help many that are saved to turn back to you and live a more godly life. Help us to be holy, Lord, because you are holy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. This morning, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about having some comfort in a troubled time. 
Unfortunately, I'm looking back at Pastor right now, and, and David had asked for the title of my lesson this morning. The title is Peace Be Still. Pastor then informed me that we're going to be cross-covering the same exact topic. But I'm sure both of us will have totally different perspectives as the Holy Ghost has led us in this direction. Lord, I, I, I mean, I know the Lord works in mysterious ways. I can't tell you how many times it's been kind of mysterious at our church that Pastor and I will sometimes even be on the same verses or covering the uh, uh, same topics. Um, but usually the Holy Spirit leads in two totally di different directions, although we cover the same verses. And I believe it, it, it could be kind of like how Jesus has accounts in the different Gospels to strengthen to strengthen the doctrine that's preached here at our church. So before we begin in the New Testament, I'd like you to turn to the little book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 26, Isaiah 26. We're going to be pulling one verse out of Isaiah chapter number 26 this morning. Uh, I felt like it was a very encouraging verse to use. And I feel that it's very applicable for what we're going to be going over this morning. So Isaiah chapter number 26, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 26, verse number three, the Bible reads, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. I'm going to take a little bit out of verse number four, trust ye in the Lord forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that it would be your words this morning, your Holy Spirit that leads me in the direction to comfort and strengthen those, your people. Lord, I just ask that we would stay strong as a church and those that are out there around the world or around the United States, that they would be able to glean something from the word of God this morning. Lord, I ask now that it would be your words, not mine, that it would benefit your people as your Holy Spirit moves through the world. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This is a, a verse that I'm going to use throughout this lesson. Um, but most of our study this morning is going to be in three of the Gospels. I'd like you to turn to Luke chapter number eight. We will not be turning back to Isaiah, so don't worry about holding your place there. We are going to be in Matthew, Mark, and Luke this morning to try to get the best perspective on how to have peace. Luke chapter number 8, verse number 22 through verse number 25, the Bible reads, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. I want you to notice a few things in the first three out of four verses here in Luke chapter number eight. One of the first things I want you to notice is in verse number 23, the boat was filled with water and they were in jeopardy. The second thing I wanna talk about today after that will be in verse number 24, Jesus calmed the storm. Jesus calmed the storm. And in verse number 25 this morning, I want you to also notice that he questioned their faith. And I, I can see Pastor right now shut his Bible, and, and I think he's probably going to go home now. <laughs> but ironically, we never talk about what we're going to preach or teach in Sunday school. We, we never talk about it or discuss it before we begin. Um, <laughs> Pastor just said maybe we should, and maybe we should. I don't know. 
But you know what? We both are led by the Holy Spirit of God as we prepare because we want to strengthen you as a church and as Christians that are out there online listening to us. Um, what I want you to notice and take away before I begin is it always appears like we're in jeopardy. We are always in jeopardy with our lives. And it often looks like every time things are going well, we wonder how long that well time or that good time will last. And the older I get, the more I see this. The older I get, I notice that things are going really well for a short time. And then after a little while of things going too well, I start to think, I wonder what next will mess up in my life. I wonder what storm will beat against the boat of my life. I wonder what is going to happen. And we shouldn't live like that. And in verse, uh, I'm sorry, and it seems like the, the markets, they go up, they go down. Our health goes up, it goes down. And I want you to notice something. Jesus always questions our faith, our faith. But in my first point this morning, I want you to notice something. Life is coming, you better be ready. Whether you like it or not, life is going to come. Now hold your place in Luke chapter number eight and turn to Matthew, or I'm sorry, Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. Because we're going to see the same account this morning. Mark chapter number four. Mark is left in your Bible, one book from Luke, if you weren't aware. Verse number 35 is where we're going to start. But before we begin, I want you to notice sometimes troubles come when you're having a pretty good day, don't they? These troubles come when everything seems to be going right. Verse number 35, the Bible reads, in the same day, the same day, when the evening was even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there, was all, and, there also, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat the ship, so now that it was full. You know, <clears throat> it seems like there was a pretty good day happening before this happened. You know, Jesus in Mark chapter 3, he just got done telling the disciples who his true family is. He just got done saying, you know who my mother and my brethren are? Those that hear my word and believe in me. And chapter number four, the beginning part of it, Jesus just got done preaching on the, how blessed they are if they hear the word of God. He's talking about the sower. He's talking about those that, that when they hear the word of God, some reject it, others fall on stony ground. I feel like the disciples were having a pretty good day at church. Right. And many times we go into the house of God on Sunday morning. And by the time we get home Sunday night, a storm has risen. We get maybe bad news of a family member or something goes wrong and, and we need to address that. But I want you to notice that in verse number 35, this happened the same day. What happened? Verse 37 and 38. Life happened. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish. You know, most of the world today has been hit hard by what's going on. Whether you believe it's overblown or not, either way, Many of the world's economies, many in, in the world, their health has failed them. Many have been hit hard today. Most people have lost their health, and many have lost much of their wealth today. Whether you want to believe it or not, life has hit hard for many around the world today. And I want you to know something. Life always, always has some kind of storm that raises up. You know, most most places in the United States and around the world this year, we've had a pretty mild winter, especially in Florida. I feel like our winters are getting more mild and more mild as the years go on. I mean, when we hit 60 degrees, most of us walk around like it's freezing, right? And many in the United States have had a fairly mild winter. And it seems like these storms just kind of come out of nowhere. 
It's kind of like that big snow in the middle of April. It's kind of like that when the winter can be mild and everything seems to appear to be going in the right direction and everybody up north starts to do their spring cleaning. They start to get their lawns ready for whatever kind of spring treatment and they seem like everything's getting ready to open up and start. Then life comes to a halt because a snow shower comes. And I'll tell you, that's kind of like how it is in life. Why? Because the storms came and the storms always come. And I'll tell you this, the storms are never going to stop coming in your life. I want you to know something. The waves beat us down as we live. Our life is filling up to the point that we may sink. Our boat may collapse or go under. And many today around the world are asking and praying to God, Jesus, don't you care? Just like the disciples asked a master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care that we may die? Many around the world may not make it to see another day. Don't you care? Jesus, are you asleep on your throne? Because life came. Jesus, where are you? Don't you know what's going on in my life? Don't you know I can't pay my mortgage? Don't you know I can't feed my family? Don't you know that in another couple of weeks, my bank account may be in the negative? Lord, don't you know? Don't you know how hard it's getting? Don't you know we can't take much more? And many around the world, because life has come, feel this way. Because a storm has reared its ugly head. Many are throwing in the towel. Many are hit with desperation. But I want you to notice something. The Bible says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Hold your place in Mark and turn back to Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8. Where's my perfect peace, Jesus? You said I'd have it if I trust in thee. You'll keep me in perfect peace. But does that mean you'll keep me in the storm and that kind of peace? Luke chapter number 8, verse number 24. Luke chapter 8, verse number 24. The Bible reads, And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and raging water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. You know, Jesus can calm the storm in your life. You know, sometimes the storm on the outside will still rage, but the storm on the inside can be calmed. Jesus can calm you. He can keep you in perfect or complete peace during these times, but your mind needs to be stayed on him. You know, I want you to notice something here. The disciples, they went to the right place. They didn't know how Jesus would save them. They just knew he could. They just knew he could. Hold your place in Luke 8 and go back to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter number 4. We're going to flip back and forth a few more times between these two. But I want you to notice something in Mark chapter number four, verse number 37. The Bible reads, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. I love how the gospels intersect. It's like witnessing an accident at a intersection and you're going to get four different perspectives on the same topic or the same thing. And I like to look at the different perspectives because each one adds just a little more to the topic. Because you know what? You're sinking today and what you're going through is heavy. And if you know anything about boats, the last thing you want to do is have a bunch of water in your boat. You want the water to be on the outside of your boat, not on the inside, not bringing you down. You want the water on the outside. You definitely don't want it on the inside where it doesn't belong. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants you to keep your eyes on him, that you may have perfect peace, that the peace is on the inside, even though the world's falling apart on the outside. 
And by the way, verse number 38, Jesus is not asleep. He's not asleep. He cares. He cares. But sometimes he lets you go through the storm because if everything was always easy, you'd never trust on him. You'd trust in yourself. The Bible doesn't say trust in yourself with all thy heart. It says trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, not yourself. Hey, storms are going to come. But keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus. He's not asleep. He cares. He cares. In verse number 39... The Bible reads, and he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now Jesus obviously took care of the storm outside, but make no mistake, they ran to him because they knew he could take care of the storm that was inside. And that's where each of us needs to go this morning, is to the storm inside. Look, the world's always going to have issues. Things are always going to come up. As long as there's a devil running around, as long as there's a world running around, as long as your flesh is running around, guess what? There's going to be storms. There's going to be storms. You just need to make sure that you calm the storm inside. That's the only storm you need to worry about. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. It's so important that we trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You know, I was looking at this and I thought to myself, I said, you know what? It's funny. Jesus is actually in the boat at this time. So many of us trust Jesus with our salvation, but not with our life. So many of us will call on him for salvation, but we rarely call on him before the storm comes. And when we call on him when the storm comes, sometimes we think selfishly, Lord, take the storm away. Instead of saying, Lord, what can I learn from the storm and who can I help? Maybe if we Christians who've been around a while and have studied the word of God, maybe this is an opportunity for us to strengthen baby Christians. Maybe this would be a great opportunity to show leadership in the home. Maybe this would be a great opportunity for you to stand up and show leadership in the church. Maybe for some scared reason, you thought because of some rejection that happened in the past that you can never serve the Lord. Hey, put aside the storm in your own soul and get busy serving the Lord today. Do you think he's sleeping? Do you think Jesus has fallen asleep in the boat of your life? No. He's still awake. He's still awake. In Luke chapter 8, we don't need to turn back there, but in verse number 25, one of the questions Jesus asked was, where's your faith? Where's your faith? And so many have lost their faith today. In Mark chapter four, verse, uh, chapter four, verse forty, Jesus said unto them, "Why are you so fearful? How was it that you have no faith?" You know that's the difference, or it should be the difference between us and the world. That should be the difference. We're not afraid. We're not, or we shouldn't be. So why are we? We should be the example. Look, the storm's going on on the outside. The world's falling apart, but you shouldn't be. You should be stronger today than you were yesterday. And when these storms come, these should try your faith. Why? So when you come forth, you'll be like gold. When these things come up, God purges us of things. He strengthens us if you're willing to let him. Why? because he trusteth in thee. We need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. You know, it's funny. I went to Winn-Dixie the other morning. I, my wife needed some coffee. She likes a specific iced coffee. I like it too, but I try not to drink it. It's a huge temptation because it's like drinking chocolate milk and I love chocolate milk. But I'm standing in line because Winn-Dixie now has to open at eight o'clock instead of seven. And there were two older people standing in front of me. 
six feet apart, talking about everything going on in the world. And one had gloves on, the other didn't. And a guy comes up and stands behind me. He's got his surgical mask on. And I'm standing there with no mask at all, no gloves. And I'm listening to the fear come out of these people. And as the clock ticks closer to eight o'clock, they start to say, well, what's, what's really going to happen in this world when we go back to how things were if we do? And they have no peace and they have no faith and they're scared. But we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. And I wasn't. And kind of like the loud mouth that I am, I decided to enter their conversation when they put their Jesse James bandanas across their face. And I looked at him and I said, wow, I know you look like you're in your 70s, but you guys look like you're ready to rob a bank. <laughs> and for a brief moment, they looked at me and laughed. They did. They laughed. Why? Because they looked ridiculous and they knew it. And sometimes being able to laugh in the face of a storm is the best remedy. I don't blame them for their fear. Talking with them, I don't believe they knew Jesus the way I did or the way I do. But there's storms out there today, and there's a lot of fear. And we don't need to be afraid. Why? Because Jesus has already calmed the storm in my life and in my heart. And I've already settled it in my heart who I'm going to serve. And just like Esther said, if I perish, I perish. And if someone wants to kill me, don't tempt me with heaven. Now, I'd love to be here for my family and my church family and the people I work for that I have good relationships with. I want to be here for all those things that I enjoy life. And I try to live life to the fullest. And I never want to be afraid. Verse number 41, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? What manner of man is this? Well, we have the luxury of looking through our Bible, and we know this is Jesus, and we know who he is. Do you know 89 times in your New Testament, Jesus is quoted as being the Son of Man? The Son of Man, 89 times. And in all points, He was tempted as we are and yet without sin. Jesus knew what they were going through. I don't think He questioned their fear or their lack of faith in a bad way. I think he was just asking the question, where is your faith? Why are you afraid? Why are you so scared of your own shadow today? Why are you so scared? You trust me with your salvation, but you don't trust me in any other area of your life. Why are you so fearful, guys? I'm here. You're in my hand. And the Holy Spirit has sealed you in your heart. And God the Father has put his hand over that. Why are you so afraid? It's normal to be afraid, but we don't need to be fearful to where we lose our faith over it. Fear is normal, but living in it is not. It's not. Let's turn to Matthew chapter number 14 for probably one of the best accounts of, of dealing with your fear. <clears throat> Matthew 14, verses number 13 through 21, Jesus just got done feeding 5,000 men. Or 5,000. Or 10,000. The Bible's not clear on how many others were there. Because the Bible says in verse 21, about 5,000 men beside women and children. We don't have the exact number, but what I'll tell you is this. It was a lot. 
It was a lot. What was Jesus saying? Hey, Israelite, when you're in the wilderness, don't worry, I'm going to feed you with manna and quail. Hey, Elijah, when you doubt and you're fearful, I'm going to bring the ravens to bring you food. Hey, when you're afraid, hey, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. What are we afraid of? The disciples just saw one of the greatest miracles take place. In verse number 22, reality sets in. And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him into the other side while he set sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. You know what? Here comes life again. Oh, they were on a mountaintop. They were doing the best they could when Jesus was feeding 5,000. It was great to be told you're part of the true family when he said, my mother and my brethren are the ones that believe in me. Oh, it was great when he talked about how they hear the word of God and how there are some that can't or won't or don't. <clears throat> Everything was good then, but yeah, guess what? Now they're back in the boat. And now... Life comes again. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 25 through 27, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, "Is It, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid if you trust in the Lord. Don't be afraid if you trust Jesus today. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> Don't be afraid. And God love him, Peter, who usually put his foot in his mouth more than any of the disciples, the one who usually ate his hat, so to speak, after he spoke. <laughs> the one who always seemed to be zealous for the Lord with his mouth. But when life came, he always made a choice that was contrary to what Jesus thought he should do, or God. Just like most of us. And Peter decides, you know what? <clears throat> In verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid, come, bid me come unto thee on the water. Hey, Lord, if it's you, let me come out into the storm and visit. <clears throat> and I believe that during a storm, that's the best time to visit Jesus. Peter had the right idea. But verse 29, and he said, come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And people criticized Peter for his denial of Christ, and that was rightfully so. And how he cut off the ear of the high priest servant, Malchus, and rightfully so. And how Jesus had to tell him, if you love me three times, feed my sheep. But you know, other than Jesus Christ, Peter holds the record for water walking. Think about that. In all of his errors, he still had faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's what we need to remember today. So Peter gets out of the water or out of the boat and onto the water, and he walks to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, in verse 30, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. The truth of the matter is the Lord's always right there to save his per people. And the storm's always right there. And Peter knew it. But how many of us don't feel that Jesus is right there to grab us when we begin to sink? Do you realize Peter sank because his mind was not stayed on thee? 
because he trusteth in thee. Did you realize Peter began to doubt? <clears throat> and that's what Jesus asked him in verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou a little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Why, oh why, Christian, do we doubt the Lord Jesus Christ? We trust Him for our salvation, but we don't trust Him in the storm. We trust Him for our salvation, but we don't trust Him in our finances. We trust Him when we pray for our kids, but we don't trust Him when it comes to our own health. We pray and we ask Him and we trust Him for things, but when it comes to the storms, we doubt. Why? Why do we have such little faith? Because the truth is, whether you're inside of the boat or you're on the outside of the boat, there's still a storm. There's still a storm, whether you're in the boat or whether you're out of the boat. There's always going to be a storm. And especially after it's been calm. Why? Because the weather of life changes. That's why. But you had better make sure there's no storm inside of you. Peace be still inside. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Peter, if you had just kept your mind stayed on the Lord Jesus while you were walking on the water, you would have never sank. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. You're not going to sink if you trust in the Lord today. Don't lose your faith, Christian. Don't lose your faith because the world's falling apart. The world's always falling apart. You know, I'd rather live and die than die never having lived. But yet the world is so afraid. Revelation says the fearful and unbelieving will not enter into the kingdom of God. I don't want it to be said that I'm fearful. I'm not saying you can work your way to heaven. I'm just saying that's the MO of some of those who don't get there. I don't want to be like the world. I want to be different. Come out from among them and be ye separate. That's more than just how you act or look. That's how you think. That's how you live. We need to remember that there's nothing to be afraid of if you're saved. Get in your Bibles more today than you were yesterday. Because if all you do is sit around, whether you're watching CNN or Fox News, all you're going to hear is the doom and gloom. Gloom. Why? Because that's what they make money on. And the media loves it right now. You know why? Because their ratings were horribly down when things were going well. Because nobody cared about what they had to say. They were enjoying the fruit of the blessing of God. But now the storms come and everybody's turning on the news instead of turning on the Bible. We need to turn our Bible on. Look, I guarantee you not much has changed from yesterday. But yet people are glued to it 24 hours a day. I'm not against watching the news, but don't, don't let that be what consumes you because you will end up fearful and unbelieving. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him because he trusteth in him. Trust in him, not man. I have no confidence in man. Why? Because just like Jesus, I know what was it, what is in man. Just like in John chapter 2. And he would not commit himself unto them because he knew what was in them. But yet his disciples, his people, the ones who trusted in him, he came to them. And that's what we need to remember. Jesus is right there for us. And when the world cries out, how can, the, how can God let these things happen? Storms happen. But we don't let them happen inside our heart and in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask you to be with us this morning. I ask that you be with our church. Lord, I ask that you strengthen us, encourage our faith. Lord, the disciples asked, strengthen our faith. Lord, through your word, we can move mountains. We can make a difference. 
we can have peace that passes all understanding. Lord, help us to stay fixed on you. Just like Joshua, you told him, don't swerve to the right or to the left, but stay straight. Peter looked to the right, he looked to the left, and he got afraid. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to wait for you and your salvation. Lord, I ask that you be with Beverly Mott and the family. I couldn't imagine losing my son or any of my daughters. What pain, what discouragement, what, what a storm that's popped up in their life. Lord, I just ask that you meet with that family. I, I don't know the need. You do. You know the storm. You know whether they're in a boat or out of a boat. You know what they need. But Lord, as a church, let us pray for them. And Lord, we have so many prayer requests from our members. A lot of them, because they're older saints, it has to do with health. Many of them get discouraged. Many of them are waiting for a miracle. But Lord, give them a miracle in their heart that they don't need to worry, that you're right there. Lord, we have so many around the world that we take care of through our missionaries. We have such a testimony of a love for missionaries at this church. We would meet every one of their needs all the time if we could. But Lord, sometimes they get to go through storms and things get to be difficult for them that they trust on you as well. We want to help them. We'd help them all if we could at every moment. But sometimes they need to go through a storm that they don't forget to trust in you. Lord, I just ask that you be with our church, that soon you'd bring us back together that we'd meet and have the fellowship we need. What do we miss when we miss going to church? We miss our fellowship. And that's the greatest gift you've given us is friendship to others. Lord, I ask now that you be with the pastor as he brings the message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.